The easiest way to get faster in cycling is to improve and optimize your equipment, clothing, and position on the bike in order to become more aerodynamic. And if you wanted to do this in the past, you had two options, either visit an expensive wind tunnel or listen to what marketing departments say, which is really confusing when everyone says that their product is the fastest. However, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can aero test in the real world and see how different clothing, helmets, and position can affect your speed and your aerodynamic drag. And I'm gonna show you how you can do it at different levels of tech, depending on what you have. Wind tunnels are really useful and can give great repeatability of data and they're really good at minimizing variables. However, although there are more variables, testing in the real world has the advantage of it being in the real world and it's way more accessible. But before I show you different real world methods, we need to establish some ground rules that you should do with any aero testing. If you wanna get faster, aerodynamics is the easiest and most important thing to consider. And it's relevant to any cyclist that wants to be faster, not just time trialists. And that's why I've deliberately bought a road bike here today. If you wanna do a Grand Fondo or a Sportive as quick as possible, or if you race, or if you just wanna be able to beat your mates on a group ride, this is relevant to you. Location is key. Ideally, you want to pick a road that's got a nice, consistent, smooth surface and one that's free from traffic and cars as they're gonna quite significantly impact the result. Ideal situation would be a dedicated track like this that's free from cars or just a really quiet stretch of road. Factor in that weather conditions will affect the result. Now, the more sophisticated methods that we're gonna show you do account for weather, but you should still try and avoid testing things on different days. And if you're testing on a day where the weather is constantly changing, that's not good either, as it can seriously affect the result. But fortunately today, we've dropped on and we've picked the hottest, stillest day in the UK of all time. Nice. Clean your bike. And this is because a dirty drivetrain can affect the results. It's less efficient. So make sure you thoroughly clean it, degrease it, and apply your chosen lube. It's important to do things like this because you need your baseline to be consistent whenever you test. Get scientific and grab yourself a lab book or a notebook that you can use to record the different aero test experiments that you do. The more detail in there, the better. You should date it, you should put in the weather conditions, things like the system weight of you and the bike combined, your tire pressure, details of the different experiments you're doing, your bike setup, your tire width, all sorts. The more information, the better. This is really good for then comparing experiments you do on different occasions and looking back on things that you've changed. First, perform a baseline test, and then after that, on every subsequent run, change just one thing at a time. This is really important. It can be tempting to change loads of things and then see how much faster you get. But by changing one thing at a time, you can isolate it and see exactly how much difference it made and if it did actually make a difference. And finally, if you get an unexpected result, an anomaly, then retest it until you get consistent data every time you perform that experiment. The first and most basic kind of test you can do to compare different things is a roll down test. Anyone can do this. All you require is a downhill section of road that you can set off from a rolling start and then go across the segment without pedaling or braking. You wanna set yourself up a dedicated segment and then you simply measure how long it takes you to cover that distance and then compare the different times. The beauty of this kind of testing is you don't need an expensive power meter in order to do it. Although I would recommend using a bike computer or even better, a GPS computer to measure all the different segment times of every run that you perform. Roll down tests can be useful in assessing big changes such as from a really shallow wheel to a really deep one or you know, different clothing uh, if it's a really baggy non-aerodynamic piece of clothing to a tight fitting aero jersey like this. But smaller things, it's not very sensitive so you'll struggle to see differences there. And in terms of your roll down segment length, the longer the better. I'd say try and do something around 600 meters, but if you can do longer, 
probably be a bit more accurate. The next kind of testing you can do is with a power meter, and this will allow you to do more accurate testing than the roll down. And this means that you can look at smaller changes in your equipment or setup. And to do this kind of testing, you want to find a nice clear section of road where you can perform a lap or do an out and back segment, uh, or even better on a track like this where I can just do laps and it's completely free from traffic. Then you want to analyze those segments and ideally try and hold the same power, something that's repeatable when you do them. When you've done your testing, upload your ride files to a third party website. There's several out there such as Golden Cheetah or My Windsock. And these apps are able to account for the weather conditions that you faced on the day and also correct for slight changes and differences in the power that you did and therefore give you some quite meaningful data. Just bear in mind that they do use weather forecast data rather than measuring the actual weather data on the ground as it presented itself to you and this can be quite different. However, the most accurate way to perform real life aero testing and a method that many pro teams and top bike companies are now using is to combine a power meter on your bike, a speed sensor and a dedicated aero sensor array pod mounted to the front of your bike. And over recent years, we've seen a few of these sensor pods come to the market and the Aero Lab that we've got here is arguably the most sophisticated and precise yet. The device is a really impressive bit of kit and features super sensitive lab grade sensors built into it. And this makes the device very expensive, but the makers say it's required to give the accuracy that they need. And it's able to process 5,000 data points every second, which is rather mad. And using this, it can provide real time uh, data on your aerodynamic drag, your coefficient of drag area, your CDA, your coefficient of rolling resistance uh, that you're getting from your tires and the road surface. It can also do the wind speed, the wind yaw angle, measure gusts and accelerations, as well as make estimations for your drivetrain losses too. And all this does make the device rather expensive, but fear not, your kidneys are safe for now. You don't need to remortgage your house. It's not intended that you buy the device. Instead, it's aimed at coaches, bike fitters, aero consultants, people like that, who can then lease the device and charge people like you or I for a coaching session or an aero session where you can test various things. And using this sensor, you can find out so much valuable information, such as what is the best clothing or equipment for a given event or race that you want to do. Is a disc wheel really faster on your chosen TT event on that specific course? Why were you slower in the second half of your event, even if you did more power? All these questions and more can be answered. To perform a test is really simple. You fire up the app on your smartphone or tablet and then this connects to the Aerolab sensor. You fill in your profile information for the athlete that's going to be tested, testing myself in this instance, and then you put in a load of key metrics in there, such as the combined system weight of the bicycle and the rider, things such as the lap distance you're going to be doing. I've got a nice 450 meter circuit nailed out, and then other things as well, such as your tire width, tire pressure. The more information, the better, the type of power meter you're using and all that stuff. You connect a speed sensor to one of your wheels. This is more accurate than just relying on GPS. And then in addition, you have your power meter as well. So I've connected those, I press next, and then it fires me to the start test screen. I'm ready to go. Um, I press start test on the phone, and then this relays to the head unit, and the head unit gives me instructions about when to turn on my designated track that I've set up. But enough jibber jabber, because I'm, I'm gonna go and do some testing on the Pinarello F and find out exactly how fast an aero it is, and some other things too. Oh, oh I'm stiff. I'm gonna perform a baseline run initially, and the beauty of what this can do is it only needs a 400 meter out and back, which is a pretty small space in order to get all the data it needs. And so that means you can test a lot of things in a short space of time and you need to ride at a minimum speed of 15 kilometers an hour and the sensor actually relays to a head unit which gives you instructions as to when you need to turn at the end of each of your runs and back and so but uh, all right let's go I'm gonna press start test on the phone and go 
The beauty of this device is that you only need a 400 meter out and back section to gather data. You can test all sorts of different things too. However, I'm gonna look at three things that are relevant to all of us and don't require you to buy anything. Seated versus standing riding positions and the effect of unzipping your jersey as it's 36 degrees on the track today and I'm rather hot. I'll get them done and then I'll head to Megabase to dissect the results. I'm back in GCN Megabase to compute the results because there's some pretty interesting findings here. But before I do that, I need to give context to what CDA, the coefficient of drag, and what that number actually means. Because otherwise, for many of you, it'll just be a random gibberish number. So here is a sort of sliding timeline type scale. Starting at the most aero end of the spectrum, a CDA of around 0.008 is outrageously aero. We're in the realms of fared recumbent bicycles such as this. Now getting slightly less aero, but still outrageously aero, if we move on to 0.0165, then that is the kind of most aerodynamic track riders in the world. You're talking people with excellent positions, but also on very fast bikes with double disc wheels, a pursuit style handlebar setup, and then track bikes are also more aerodynamic because they don't have all the gubbins, derailleurs and gears and brakes on them that a normal bike has. Moving up the scale to sort of 0.17 to 0.18, this is seriously low again, and is kind of what you can expect from the best time trialists on the road, but you would need an excellent position and a seriously geeked out bike with lots of tricks and little toys all over it. And again, a riders on the smaller side. It's harder for bigger riders to achieve such a low CDA. Think riders such as Lisa Klein or Remco Evenepoel. A range of 0.19 to 0.21 is typical of pro riders on TT bikes. Moving up to 0.24, that's what you'd expect from an aero position on a normal road bike, but with sort of bent elbows and getting low. 0.28 is the typical ballpark figure for riding sat down, but on the hoods in a more sort of upright, neutral riding position. And then moving up to sort of 0.32 CDA, we're in the realms of what you could typically expect for a mountain biker sat down wearing loads of baggy clothes. Ugh. I first did a baseline reading on the Pinarello F riding on the hoods in a neutral seated position and my drag coefficient came out as 0.269 which was I was pretty pleased with that, it's pretty good. It suggests the Pinarello F is, uh, is a rather aerodynamic bike which is nice and for a rider of my height, around 185 centimetres, you'd expect 0.28 as I've mentioned on the timeline. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Now I repeated this riding out of the saddle and this gave me a CDA of 0.367, which is really high. But when I ride out the saddle, I'm quite sort of upright. I'm not like hunched over an aero like cab in a sprint. This is quite interesting when we put this into context on a climb. So if we apply my favorite climb, which is Sacalobra in Mallorca, uh, it's about 10 kilometers long it makes a huge difference. So I can calculate my time when I'm seated to be 29.26 if I'm able to do 335 watts. However, if I rode that out of the saddle the entire way, which I can do, and I, I quite like riding out of the saddle on climbs, I feel comfortable doing it, I'm over 40 seconds slower coming in at 30.07. This difference is massive, you know, over 40 seconds on a 30 minute effort. This would apply on the flat too. And the take home message is that it's, well, it's at pretty modest speeds. We're talking 18 to 19 kilometers per hour. Armed with this knowledge, I can approach the climb in a different way. So sometimes I do actually like to get out the saddle, as I'm sure many of you do. It gives a bit of relief to your muscles and can just break it up a bit. But knowing how much slower it makes me, I would aim to do this on the steeper sections where I'm going a little bit slower and just minimize the time I spend going out the saddle and try and train to get the power out seated. Next, riding with an unzipped jersey, my CDA went up to 0.30, which shows how big an aero penalty riding with an unzipped jersey is. It's something that we sometimes see pros doing and it's, you know, it's kind of seen as cool, isn't it? A lot of classic images of cycling in the tour from like the 60s and 70s we see the jersey blowing in the wind but don't do it if you want to go fast that would be like well 25 seconds on sacalobra 
What's even more telling though is if we extrapolate these CDA numbers that we've calculated into a bigger event such as a Grand Fondo. And I'm interested in this because in a few weeks I'm doing the Tour de Station, which is a massive ultra fondo in Switzerland and it's about 240 kilometers long. Now, factoring that in, if I rode mostly out of the saddle on the climbs, which is kind of my sort of style I've been used to riding in years gone past, then that would mean I could add about 20 minutes onto my overall finishing time, which is massive. In, and this is an event that's gonna take me 10, 11 hours, but 20 minutes is, is huge. And so armed with this knowledge, it means that it really reinforces that I can train in a way where I'm trying to get the power out seated on climbs and tick along in that way. The point I'm making is that aero really matters even at modest speeds, and that is the real take home thing here. While wind tunnels can be really useful, I'm just a big fan of real life testing outdoors. And one of the main reasons for that is in a wind tunnel, you often get people, they, they sort of find really aero, but unsustainable positions. They either can't hold them when they're putting the power down, or they just can't see where they're going because they put their head down. But they, you need to see where you can go when you're riding outdoors. And of all the methods that we've talked about in this video, by far the best is, is using a sensor. And I think it's going to be the most valuable to anyone uh, who's considering doing some aero testing to find someone who, who offers that kind of service, an expert, and go and do some testing with them. And in the short space of time that I've had access to this sensor, I was able to improve my time trial position and you know, reduce my, my drag coefficient and my CDA quite significantly from 0 0.190 to around 0 0.185, which meant I was able to ride a 10 mile time trial in under 20 minutes off, well, watts that are very achievable for, for many amateurs, certainly not high numbers. And I think that, that sort of says a lot. And this was not through buying any extra equipment, this was through just changes to my position, and in particular my head position, and tweaking that, and that's where I got way more aero, which is really exciting. And what's perhaps even more exciting is that Aero Lab have said, we can borrow this sensor to do some more testing with it. So, if there's anything that you guys would like to see us test, let us know in the comments section and then I'll make a video where we test them and see what difference they make. And this could be anything. It could be whether your bike is quicker after you've jettisoned your water bottles um, and have empty cages, as people often do to save weight, or perhaps it's different tire pressures, or perhaps it's what's the aero penalty of wearing a sort of rain cape versus something tighter and uh, more snug like a gabber. Well, let us know in the comments section and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And hopefully, do that in the future. I want to know the answers to all these questions, so fire them down.